general population everywhere throughout the nation about the significance of the deliberate blood gift. It is to celebrate throughout the country to motivate and encourage people to donate blood and to be a regular blood donor. It is an honor to be here surrounded by individuals who embody the spirit of humanity, generosity and compassion. I now request Ms. Neha Upadhyay to kindly take over. Namami Dhanvan Karimadi Deva Sura Surayra Bandita Pada Padma Lokair Jararuk Bhaya Mrityu Nasham Dhatar Misham Vividhoshadhina Dhatar Misham Shankham Chakram Jalaukam Dadadam Ruta Ghatam Charu Dor Vishchaturvi Sukhsva Svachati Rudyam Shoka Parivila Sammauli Mambojanetram Kalam Bodo Jvalangam Kati Tata Vilasa Charu Pitam Varadu Vande Dhanvantarintam Nikhiladadavana Praudhadavignavilam Om Namo Bhagavate Mahasudeshanaya Vasudevaya Shri Dhanvantari Swarupaya Narayanaya Namaha Narayanaya Namaha Thank you, Neha. Music has the power to touch our souls and connect us with something greater. Let's begin this event with a heartfelt welcome song celebrating the joy and spirit of giving that defines this special day. I now request students of Vidya Prabodhini College to take over.
thank you for your wonderful performance. Next, we bring to you a mesmerizing Bharatnatyam performance, a classical dance that tells stories through graceful movements, expression and rhythm. This dance embodies the beauty of tradition and the vitality of life. I now request Rakshanda Parab and Ayushi Gavande to kindly take over. in various schools across Goa on HIV AIDS awareness. I'm here in front of you depicting the story of Suraj who is suffering from HIV AIDS through the flash mob dance. So let us stand together and support the campaign with Sahaja dia, ikhlas orang siapa? Apa yang kita buat jadi tak? Mana sih yang jadi tak? Tahu tak tu? 
पार कर दिया जो मुझे और गहराई में बदल गई है प्यार ईश मोहब्बत कुछ नहीं बस मजे
I now request Dr. Lalita Umreskar to kindly welcome the gathering. Uh, respected Dr. Shain uh, Sayed, Deputy Director DHS. Respected Dr. Bhushan Bhalli, Principal of Vidya Prabodhini College, Dr. Grupa Jo, our keynote address speaker for today, my friends, colleagues, warm welcome to all of you today. So, if you see a lot of us are in red color today, maybe because it's the color in one of the days of Navratri, the auspicious days of Navratri are on. And red is the color for power, passion and of course blood. So what better day than today to be going uh, to have our state level function here. I take advantage of this auspicious day to share a prayer which I just happened to notice. I thought I will share it with you all also. It says that we pray that we can direct our passion and power to live a life of purpose for intelligence and ability to be of service to the divine and all the human beings in this world. So what better day and what better way to appreciate all the donors who have given a gift of life to their fellow living beings on earth. So most of the things have been already said by our compare for today. So National Blood Donation Day is observed every year throughout the country on 1st of October. And it is to stress upon the individuals, uh, you know, what is the importance of blood in an individual's life. So you would wonder then if it is on 1st October, what are we doing today on 8th of October? But for the last few years, the it is not restricted to one day, but just to say a fortnight or so before this, and it culminates on World Blood Donation Day. So this year what happened was, uh, we were appreciated, we got the uh, second highest, uh, you know the state with the second highest blood donation and uh, our people, our representatives and few of the donor organizations were felicitated. So we couldn't hold the function on uh, first. So we said why not take today's day, you know, on these auspicious days of Navratri and uh, to felicitate and to appreciate the donors today. That's why we are having it today, 8th and not on the 1st. So as it is already told you, uh, told to you, this function is to create basically awareness about, uh, you know, non-remunerated voluntary blood donation, the importance of blood in our life and of course to thank all the blood donors who have been continuously and generously uh, donating blood over so many years. In the campaign for today is celebrating 20 years of giving. Thank you God blood. Thank you donors. We know the importance of blood not only in saving lives in emergencies but also to sustain a life even in chronic patients who are on leukemia treatment or thalassemia or uh, other conditions. <coughs> Statistics will be taken later by our keynote address but in short to say in India nationally uh, our need is around 1.4 crores and we need up to 1 crore. In Goa we are fortunate because of our donors we are able to achieve more than our target of 25,000 units per year. So it is for this that we were felicitated uh, in Jaipur on 1st of October. So without much ado, I would like to thank all the donors. Uh, you know, we had to share this whatever award we have received to appreciate all of you. That's why we are having the function today. Someone asked me why we are having it in this college, but I say why not? Because as you've seen how the students, they have taken today's function to another level only. We do have inaugural functions, but you know, the passion and the enthusiasm and the way they have done it, it is very, very good. They have helped us in creating awareness about HIV AIDS and they are always, uh, you know, easily approachable and very cooperative for us. So, we are very grateful and the other reason was that we have youngsters here, so it gives us an opportunity to directly address them, to motivate them, encourage them to donate blood. And uh, so, once again, thank you to all the blood donors. I am sure it will encourage all our students here to come forward and more and more blood donation goes. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. I now invite Dr. Krupa Jok to deliver the keynote address. Dr. Jok's insight will guide us as we reflect on the importance of voluntary blood donation and its life saving impact. Uh, respected uh, Deputy Director, Director of Health Services, Dr. Shaheen. 
the principal of uh, the Vidya Prabodhini College, Dushan Bhave sir, project director of the Dalita, all the dignitaries and guests today, a very good morning to all of you. Today being for this function, at this moment, I'm feeling very happy. I've been associated with blood bank at district hospital for the last 10 years. And being here today reminds me of those stressful times which we face in our blood bank when we have shortage of some blood group, some blood unit. And in such times, we send out desperate calls to our voluntary blood donors. And I'm happy to tell that not once have they failed us. Every time that we called out to them, they have reached out to us. They have left all their important things and they have come out to help us and to help those people who are in need of blood. And therefore I would say that all of you who are here are truly, you are our true superheroes. Your dedication and willingness to help others is an inspiration to all of us. And taking this opportunity today, I would first of all like to express my deepest gratitude and appreciation to all the voluntary blood donors who are here today and also for those who are not here now but they have always reached out to us whenever we have called them out. Thank you so much. So as we have already said, today uh, on 1st of October every year, we celebrate National Voluntary Blood Donation Day. It was first celebrated in the year 1975 through the Indian Society of Blood Transfusion and Immunohematology and then on it has been celebrated every year and this is to share the need and importance of blood in the life of an individual and the need for voluntary blood donation. As I said, requirement of blood is round the clock and throughout the year. Every two seconds a blood unit is required. And therefore, all the blood banks, our main aim is to wipe off the scarcity of blood and as well as ensure safety, safe and quality blood. So there are two components to this, not just adequate blood, but adequate as well as safe and quality blood. And when it comes to these two factors, there comes the importance of voluntary blood donation. So voluntary blood donors are the cornerstone of a safe and adequate supply of blood and blood products. As it was already said, the campaign slogan for National Voluntary Blood Donation Day is celebrating 20 years of giving. Thank you, blood donors. The 20th anniversary is an excellent and timely opportunity to thank blood donors across the world for their life-saving donations over the years and honor their profound impact on both patients and donors. It is also a timely moment to address continued challenges and accelerate progress towards a future where safe blood transfusion is universally accessible. So the objectives of this campaign are to thank and recognize the millions of voluntary blood donors, to showcase the achievements and challenges of national blood programs and share best, best practices and lessons learned, to highlight the continuous need for regular unpaid blood donation to achieve universal access to safe blood transfusion and to promote a culture of regular blood donation. This is, I think, the most important thing. Building up of that culture of voluntary blood donation in the society is of prime importance. <coughs> As I said, the second aspect of this is ensuring blood safety. Now that we are here in this college premises and I see a lot of young people being associated with blood bank for so many years, whenever I see young students, the first question that comes to my mind is, have you donated blood? And uh, you would be surprised, I even end up asking them, have you donated blood in your life anytime? And then they come out with a lot of reasons, what are their restrictions, why have they not donated? And eventually a lot of them do get convinced because the reason for not donating is sometimes a very small thing, a very silly thing. So first, so let me just take you briefly through what is the process of blood donation. So why do we need to donate blood? As we know, blood is a vital fluid. It is an essential element of life. It is not manufactured. Over the last one and a half century, we have seen lot of innovations, lot of progress, new researches, new technologies coming up. Every decade, every year, we, we see new innovations. 
we see lot of changes in the way we live the way we think the way we work but this one area we have still not been able to manufacture human blood artificially so whenever there is any need for blood we have to get it from donors like you all so human beings is the only source of blood and second aspect is that blood is perishable that is when we collect blood from donors it has a shelf life it has to be used within that time period or else it's get, it gets wasted so this has to be a continued activity so that we maintain our blood levels adequate to meet the demands and that is where the role of community and voluntary blood donor comes in blood transfusions as we say it definitely saves lives working in a hospital setup every day we come across situations where blood is needed and it saves life it may be emergency cases we see so many accidents happening road accidents are so frequent these are the cases where there is blood loss and emergency blood transfusions are required following pregnancy and delivery if there is hemorrhage postpartum hemorrhage it is an indication for blood transfusion a lot of chronic medical illnesses like cancers renal disorders kidney failures all these patients are dependent on transfusions then uh, certain genetic disorders like thalassemias or other bleeding disorders are indications where repeated blood transfusions are required and other indications would be surgery so replacement of blood or product is essential otherwise serious permanent injury or death may result so as i said blood transfusion saves life but it is not free from complications there are certain risks associated with blood transfusion which include transmission of infections and that is where it is very important to ensure that we have a safe and healthy pool of blood donors and this is where the importance of voluntary blood donation comes in so as i said 18 is a very good year at the age of 18 we become uh, legally uh, permissible to do lot of things we can we get a driving license we can vote and one more important thing is that you become legally eligible to donate blood so please don't waste this opportunity as soon as you turn 18 please walk into your nearest blood bank and donate blood at least take a experience once and see how you feel and i'm sure you all will come back again so coming to blood donors we have grouped blood donors into three categories first we have voluntary non remunerated donors we have replacement or relative donors and the third category is professional or commercial donors so first category is the voluntary donors these are people who donate out of free will without any pressure and there are no gains in cash or kind in this process they donate blood freely they don't donate it for any particular person it is for anybody who is in need of blood and that is why most of the time these donors are well informed about the importance of safe blood they belong to lo low risk category and since lot of them come for repeat donations they get screened repeatedly they are willing to donate regularly and even in cases of emergency when we call them they are the ones who are most likely to come to help us and that is why we need to maintain this pool of voluntary donors they are very precious for us next category is of replacement donors replacement donors are usually family members relatives or friends of a person who is in need of blood for any reason so they come to donate for a particular patient or a particular person now usually when such donors come to blood bank we counsel them we explain to them what is the importance of blood donation and how it can benefit them and society and eventually we see that lot of them become willing to become regular blood donors but replacement donation has its own disadvantages first of all when a patient is ill his relatives are stressed out as such so asking them to search for a donor is going to add to their stress secondly when a person comes in such situations he is under pressure to donate he is worried that if i don't donate then my patient may not get blood so there are chances that he may uh, not reveal certain things in his uh, about his illnesses or anything that he is suffering from and that is where uh, all the problem comes up 
and third and most important thing is sometimes commercial donors or paid donors may come disguised as replacement donors and that is why we try to avoid replacement donations as far as possible and the third category which is commercial and paid donors it is something which is banned by law from jan 1998 these are donors who would come and donate blood in return for monetary benefit and because they are in need of money they tend to donate more frequently than is advised thereby the quality of blood that we get from them is not a very good quality so also since they are donating blood for the purpose of money they are very likely to conceal facts related to their ill health or any diseases and that is why professional donation is completely banned, it is not happening anywhere. So here, donate blood, blood donors are quite heroes, definitely. So what are the steps for blood donation? So whenever a person comes to donate blood, first thing is donor registration and counselling, wherein all the details of the donor are noted, and he is explained about the procedure of blood donation, what are the benefits, what are the risk factors, and what is safety of blood. So this is done during the process of counselling. Followed by this, he is given a questionnaire which has lot of questions related to his health and after going through the questionnaire, it is decided whether he is eligible for donation or no. And this is followed by a small health checkup. The purpose of this is to ensure safety of blood not only for the donor but also for the person who is going to receive the blood. And during the procedure of screening a person for blood donation, uh, we usually evaluate whether he is suffering from any illness which can uh, result in deferment of that donor. So all these conditions like when a person suffers from heart disease, anemia, kidney disorders or uh, if the person is having bleeding disease, epilepsy, heart problems, diabetes, he may be deferred either for some time or permanently depending upon the condition. So the donor health checkup follows the donor questionnaire and counselling. So the criteria for donors in short are any person who is between 18 to 65 years. 60 is the cutoff if it is first time donation but repeat donors can donate up to 65 years of age. His weight should be 45 kg and more for 350 ml donations. Blood pressure should be normal. Pulse rate should be between 60 to 100. Normal temperature, hemoglobin, the cutoff is 12.5 grams. If hemoglobin is 12.5 grams and above, the person can donate blood. And the skin, that is venipuncture site, should be free from any punctures, scars and infections. So if your age is between 18 to 65 years, if your weight is at least 45 kg, if your hemoglobin is more than 12.5 and if you feel you are fit, then what are you waiting for? You can go and donate your blood. So there are certain points which we stress upon for a person who comes for blood donation. A person who comes for blood donation should have adequate sleep, that is at least 6 to 8 hours of sleep is required. He should not be fasting, in last 4 hours he should have had a good meal and he should drink plenty of water. The person should avoid consumption of alcohol and smoking and wear comfortable clothes. Donor self exclusion is a procedure which we follow sometimes that is when a person comes for blood donation and during the counselling if the donor reveals to us that yes he has some risk factors which may make him ineligible for blood donation like a high risk behaviour, IV drug addicts, homosexuals. So in these cases we offer them the alternative of self exclusion and then they uh, do not donate the blood, they decide not to donate. And there is yet another uh, term called as confidential unit exclusion wherein if a person wants to donate blood because of peer pressure and a lot of other factors in these cases even if we do take blood donation that unit is excluded from our inventory in a confidential manner. So regarding blood donation, blood donation is a completely safe procedure. We use single use disposable needles for donation. The procedure takes around 10 to 15 minutes followed by recovery time and a uh, lot of people have lot of misconceptions that excess blood will be taken from my body, I will feel weak after blood donation, 
some people get scared of the needles so remember it is a very safe procedure we take just 350 to 450 ml of your blood volume which gets replaced in your body automatically within few hours to few days so after donation what care is the donor required to take the person has to drink more fluids than usual in the next four hours if bleeding starts from the point of prick then pressure should be applied and the arm should be raised if faintness or giddiness is experienced the person is made to lie down and his legs are raised so that blood flow to the brain increases the dressing or the tape which is put at the site of prick is to be removed after 12 hours and in the next 24 hours after blood donation the person is usually advised to avoid strenuous exercise like athletics jogging swimming he can do other than that his routine work he can do there's no problem with that he has to avoid smoking for next half an hour and do not consume alcohol before the next meal and after donation he becomes eligible for the next donation after three month period so what are the benefits of blood donation first of all when you do blood donation you become eligible to get a free health checkup during the procedure of blood donation we check pulse we check blood pressure we check hemoglobin and we do a lot of uh, uh, testing of the blood in our laboratory so it is kind of a mini health checkup that you have and we have seen that lot of conditions do get detected first time when people come for blood donation one thing is hypertension. Lot of people are not aware that they have a little high BP because initial stages there are no symptoms. So during our screening we find the BP to be high. Anemia gets detected, low hemoglobin get dis gets detected during screening for blood donation. Other benefit is identification of rare groups. A lot of in individuals who come for donation may have rare blood groups which they may not be aware of. So during donation when they come for uh, when they come to know, they make a note of it and it is very useful for them because at any point, if they come in any situation where they would require blood, then if they are aware that they are of rare group, then it helps them. And definitely donating blood is healthy for your heart and vascular system. It uh, lowers the risk of cardiac diseases. And this is something which a lot of donors themselves tell us that they Donating blood is a divine experience. Probably this is a spiritual side to blood donation. We usually talk about the scientific side. But definitely, altruism and volunteering have been linked to positive health outcomes, including a lower risk for depression and a greater longevity. So why do we need to stock up blood in blood banks? Why cannot we just donate and then use that blood at that time? No, that is not possible because emergency can strike at any time at any point with any blood group so we need to be prepared for that and that is the reason we need to have adequate stock of blood with us so also uh, after taking the blood we need to screen it and that is why we need to uh, pre-donate the blood and by stocking up the blood we can separate the blood into its various components making its use more efficient So some few facts of human blood. Human body has about 4 to 5 liters of blood, which is roughly 8% of our body weight. 40 to 45% of this is RBCs and 55 to 60% is plasma. Lifespan of RBCs is 120 days in the body and of WBCs is 3 to 9 days. So after a blood donation, it takes around 36 hours for blood volume to be replaced and 21 days for the blood cells to be replenished. Every year, millions of blood units are collected from donors throughout the world. A person can donate 168 times in his lifetime or four times in a year. And there are definitely donors who have scored centuries in blood donation. So what happens to your blood after you donate it? What exactly is the cycle? So first is after donation, we do the labeling and marking of the units. And these units are then uh, transported to our blood banks. And here, blood is separated into components. Now this is a uh, very important step because separating blood into components makes it more efficient uh, for use. 
We separate it into packed cells, that is red cells, plasma and platelets. Simultaneously, uh, blood grouping and screening for infections is carried out. And only after all these processes are done, blood is stored into our uh, refrigerators and it is ready for use for those who are in need of it. So blood units are uh, tested uh, for the following infections before issuing to the patients. Hepatitis B, Hepatitis C, HIV 1 and 2, Malaria and Syphilis. Hence the blood which is tested is safe for issue to patients. So component separation involves separation of one unit of blood into three or four different components. So the components which are prepared are packed cells, platelet concentrate, fresh frozen plasma and cryo precipitate. So in this way one unit of blood that you donate is going to benefit minimum three to four patients who are in need of blood. So this is how the separation of blood units is done. So let's just look at the global scenario regarding blood donation. So as we can see here, about 118.5 million blood donations are collected globally. But if you see only 40% of, the, of these are collected in high income countries, which form only 16% of world's population. So if you look at this, countries which are middle income and low income countries need to increase their rate of blood donation to meet the demand. In low income countries, up to 54% of blood transfusions are given to children under 5 years of age. Whereas in high income countries, most frequently transfused patient group is over 60 years of age, which in turn reflects the health infrastructure and overall well-being in uh, the developed countries. And what we have seen is through all these efforts towards blood donation, from the year 2008 to 2018, there has been an increase of 10.7 million blood donations from voluntary unpaid donors, which is a great achievement in itself. In total, 79 countries collect over 90% of their blood from voluntary donors. However, still we have a long way to go because there are still 54 countries which collect more than 54% of their blood from replacement donors. And yet another uh, thing is uh, fractionation, that is plasma which is produced in blood banks can be given for fractionation so that plasma derived products are available which will make its use more efficient. So this is yet another important point. Here we can see that 50% of blood collected in low income countries is separated into components whereas 97% of it is uh, separated into components in high income countries. So more and more blood banks need to go ahead and do component separation so that blood is utilized more optimally. Coming to the national scenario, NACO has estimated a clinical demand of 1.4 crore units of blood that arises in healthcare facilities across the country. In year 2021, around 1.03 crore blood units were collected, which meets about 71% of estimated clinical demand in the country. So in the country, we are still lagging up behind as compared to our uh, demand, our supply is little short. Almost 57% of the total collection has happened in NACO uh, supported blood centers and three-fourth, that is 74% of NACO supported blood centers have collected blood through voluntary blood donation. But yes, we still need to take this figure higher up. We need to cross the 90% mark. 41% of the blood collection in NACO supported blood centers was through voluntary blood donation camps. Another important thing is here, it says that in 2021, around 4% of total blood collections was from female donors and this stands true even for us, even in our uh, experience we have seen that uh, female donors are around 8% in ours. But yes, we as time is passing, we are seeing more and more females coming ahead and donating blood. And uh, it holds true, like we say, if a female is educated, then the family is educated. So if females come ahead and donate blood, our society will come ahead in more greater numbers for blood donation. So it is our uh, urge to all of you all that more and more female donors should come ahead for blood donation. So let's come to the scenario in Goa. 
the availability of blood in Goa is uh, ensured through a network of five licensed blood banks, of which three are in government sector, that is the Goa Medical College Blood Bank, the North District Hospital and the South District Hospital Blood Bank, and there are two, two private sector blood banks. The annual requirement of blood is 25,000 units. So if you can see the total collection in the year 2023 was 28,000 units almost. So we are uh, in a balance where demand and supply is almost met through the blood donations. And the proportion of voluntary blood collection is 74% for the state of Goa. And uh, in the year 2023, 498 blood donation camps were organized in the state. And in the year 2024 up to August, uh, total collection of blood is 19,959 units, of which 75% of blood is voluntarily collected. And uh, in 2024 up to August, the state has organized 363 blood donation camps. So this is a tabular uh, data which shows the total blood collection right from year 2005 to 2024. And if we see, uh, the collection has increased uh, significantly from 11,000 units in 2005 to 28,000 in 2023. And for this, I think we need to thank our voluntary blood donors. It is their contribution which has helped us in achieving this. And the same thing uh, about voluntary donors, if we see, it was 56% in 2005. And it has increased significantly to almost 74% in 2023. And we aim to take it even higher, about 90% we have to take. Ideal would be 100%, but at least we should keep a target of 90% for voluntary blood donation. And uh, HIV positivity in blood donations now with better screening, better education and awareness in better testing facilities, we have seen that the positivity is, uh, which was 0.7% in 2005, has come down to 0.08% in 2023. So this is again a graphic representation of the same data. We see the collection is increasing steadily. Voluntary blood donations are also increasing. So uh, during year 2023, as I said already, whatever is the projected requirement of blood in the state that was met through the blood collection. Um, this I have already said, voluntary donation has increased, HIV reactivity has drastically decreased. HIV reactivity above voluntary blood donors has decreased pro from 0 0.403 in 2005 to 0 0.08 in 2024. And all the blood units which are collected are screened mandatorily for HIV, malaria, hepatitis B, hepatitis C and VDRL for safe blood transmission. So again I urge to all of you, give the gift of life, donate blood. Feel good about yourself, donate blood, save a life. Raktadam karke dekho, achha lagta hai. Thank you. It's time to honor our dignitaries with a token of our appreciation for their time and contribution. I request Preeti and Shravani, students of Vidya Prabodhini College, to welcome our guest. We have our Chief Guest of the Day, Dr. Shalini Sayyar. We have our guest of honor, Professor Dr. Prushan Bhave. We also have with us Dr. Larita Angraska. Dr. Krupa Jo. Sir Umakant Savan. And Sri Vijay Chatpat sir. We are now at a moment that truly defines the essence of this day. It's time to honor the selfless individuals whose dedications to saving lives 
has been exemplary. Let's felicitate our blood donor with heartfelt appreciation for their contribution to society. I request our chief guest, Dr. Uh, Sayyid Sayyid, to come forward and felicitate our blood donors. I request the following to please come ahead while their names are being called. Good morning everyone. To begin with, we have the names of the donors who have donated their blood maximum number of times. Firstly, we have Nelson Joe Fernandez who has donated blood 117 times. Next we have Sudesh Narvekar who has donated his blood 107 times. Next, Egidius Dikuna, who has donated his blood 96 times. Okay, moving on to the next person. We have Avinash Chilkaya, who has donated his blood 90 times. Next we have Vinod Chimulkar who has done 67 blood donations. Up next we have Mark D'Souza who has done 60 blood donations. have our first blind blood donor who is Nympha Elisha Fernandez who has donated her blood one time. Moving on forward to our regular blood donors, we have uh, Mr. Vince Fernandez who has donated his blood 35 times. Mr. 
Mr. Vince Fernandez. Okay, next we have Dr. Ismail Sheikh, who has donated his blood 18 times. Dr. Ismail Sheikh. Okay, moving on further, we have Mr. Anthony L. Farao, who has donated his blood 35 times. Next, we have Ms. Mina Malvika Ribello, who has donated her blood 10 times. Next, we have Mr. Cedric Savio de Souza, who has donated his blood 16 times. Up next, Ranjan Malik, who has donated his blood 26 times. James Gonsalves, who has done 21 blood donations. We have Vinod Dhuri who has done 25 blood donations. I request Principal Bhushan Bhavi sir to kindly give away the mementos to our blood donors. Uh, moving on for, uh, forward, we have Shriyash Naik who has done 23 blood donations. Next in line we have Saish Naik who has done 20 blood donations. We have Shrikar Kari, who has made it like 21 times. Shrikar, sir. Next, we have Mrs. Manuela Rodriguez, who has donated her blood nine times. Moving on ahead, we have Mrs. Perpetua Xavier who has donated her blood 10 times. Next, we have Mr. Makran Wellington who has donated his blood 46 times. Next, we have Harish Chari, who has donated his blood 35 times. We have Mr. Raj Pillay who has donated his blood 35 times. Next, we have Sanjay Naik, who has donated his blood 23 times. Okay. 
Moving on ahead, we have Ms. Namrata Ritesh Naik, who has donated her blood 11 times. We have Ms. Nitra Kutnikar, who has donated her blood 11 times. Next, we have Umakan Petnikar, who has donated his blood 36 times. <laughs> Moving on ahead, we have Shivanan Shirolkar, who has donated his blood 33 times. Next, we have Shailesh Hondrik, who has donated his blood 46 times. <laughs> Up next, we have Kemo Naik, who has donated. I now request Dr. Joe to kindly uh, felicitate our blood donors. Up next we have Kemu Naik who has donated 40 times. Okay. Next we have Mark D'Souza who has donated 60 times. Sorry for the mistake. Moving on ahead we have Ram Chandra Bandekar who has donated 35 times. Next, uh, we have Varad Karmari, who has donated 50 times. Up next we have Sachin H. Parab who has donated his blood 30 times. Next we have Sitaram Chodankar who has donated his blood 50 times. Up next we have Veen Azvedo who has done 50 blood donations. Moving on ahead, we have Sushant V. Prabhu, who has done 51 blood donations. Next, we have Madesh Shehye, who has done 46 blood donations. Moving on ahead, we have Tudor Dias, who has done 56 blood donations. I now request Dr. Lalita to give away the uh, to present. 
facilitate facilitate our land owners. I apologize for my mistake. Uh, Mr. Fuller, sir. Okay, moving on ahead, we have Mr. Dikshak Naik who has done 42 flat donations. Up next, we have Shravan Rathor who has done 40 blood donations. Next we have Mrs. Joan uh, D'Souza who has done 25 blood donations. Joan or Joan? Okay, next we have uh, Varan Koe Kakore who has done 25 blood donations. I apologize, it's Varun Koe Kakore. Up next we have Alex Francis Dias who has done 30 blood donations. Moving on ahead we have Viraj Govekar who has done 37 blood donations. Next we have uh, Vincent Pinto who has donated his blood 40 times. Up next we have Mrs. Pallavi Sitte Sarmalkar who has done 10 blood donations. <laughs> Next we have um, Mr. Vyas Chodnekar who has done 45 blood donations. <coughs> Dr. Yogesh Desai who has done 40 blood donations. Finally, we have Dr. Neha Kamar who has done 10 blood donations. I now request our guest of honor, Dr. Bhushan Bhavi sir, the principal of Vidya Prabodhini College, to share his thoughts on today's occasion. Chief guest of the today's function, Dr. Sayyid, all other authorities of 
uh, Goa State AIDS Control Society and the Health Services, Government of Goa. All the esteemed blood donors who have donated blood for more than, I don't know, we, some of them have crossed century also. Congratulations to all of you. In fact, many of you must be coming first time to this premises of Vidya Prabodhini College. So, I welcome you on behalf of Prabodhan Education Societies, Vidya Prabodhini College. And first of all, let me thank the authorities, the Health Services and the World States Aid Control Society for giving us a privilege to organize such a function. In fact, we are, we are apologistic that we could not uh, accommodate you. And especially I could not make the students of my college uh, present for this beautiful presentation, especially by uh, mid event. But then regularly, I mean, uh, next time we will see that such a presentation should be there for the students of this college. We run two programs, one is BCom and the other one is an integrated course, BA, BA, which gives two degrees to a student in the time of four years. So we have 750 plus students in the college, in the college section. But as you must have seen while coming up, this entire premises is uh, having around a student strength of more than 2,800 students and uh, 400 plus staff. So it's a huge institution here in Parvori, right from 1986 onwards. We have some other sister organizations also, sister institutions working in Pumburfa and other places. Our college, although it was established in the year 2022 to 2012, only 10 years we have crossed, completed. But in every sphere of life, our college is very vibrant and has shown its unique contribution. Uh, our college is accredited by NEC, the National Assessment and Accreditation Council, for the second time with the A grade, higher A grade. <laughs> our college is also ranked among the best uh, 300 colleges of India by NIRF. So this is, these are the achievements of this college. At the third place, I would like to also mention that out of the 20 colleges which applied, for the PM Usha scheme, Prime Minister Uchatar Shiksha Abhyan, which is a scheme run by the central government for upgrading the facilities at the college level. So out of the 20 colleges, my college was selected as the only college from the state of Goa to receive grant of rupees 5 crore rupees, 5 crores. So this is a huge amount for my college. And next year I promise, that you will be sitting in an AC hall of 750 capacity plus with all my students. And I request the AIDS Control Society and the Health Services to give us more and more such opportunities so that this message has to be passed to the young generation. Many times it happened that we, we also organize our Shailesh, Dr. Shailesh Sodankar, my faculty and his team, every year they organize blood donation camps. And we have a donation of around 60 plus from my college. The problem here is with uh, either the age or the weight. <laughs> if the students are 18, some of them are not even 18 years. They cannot complete legally. And then some of them who are with 18 years, because of weight they cannot give. Because you see the next generation sitting there. I don't think they will even cross 30 or 35 kgs of weight. <laughs> this is, these are the typical problems there. But still, our students are very enthusiastic. This year, I have just spoken to Sudesh, my friend, and we will, and many other friends also have approached us, our well-wishers, Mr. Rajesh Walwaykar is here in Purvarin. And we will be doing it for community purpose also. So we, even the community will be invited for blood donation. Such programs we do regularly in our college. Let me tell you that 120 plus programs are held in this college per year, per academic year. Many, Every third day there is some program in this college. Every third day. So this is the message and the theme of the college is college to village and from campus to community. Whatever the knowledge students get in the college should be taken to the last person in the village. And whatever skills they acquire in the campus here should be taken down to the community. These are, this is our theme and um, I again welcome you on behalf of Vidya Prabodhini. Uh, blood donation is the greatest donation of these times. 
uh, we start with shramadan in the beginning years of the school we start with shramadan then that when the, when we reach at the 18 years of age we go for raktadan this is the second dan what we give and now we are hearing of the third dan can anybody name the organ donation the avayav dan anga dan as some of the channels here are in goa also they are focusing on. so these are the major three contributions of the human kind which can save lives which can add values to the life so i think i should congratulate it's it's my uh, in fact my salute to all of you that you are doing this noble service for so many years now uh, let our students take advice and message from that this is the hope for the day again i thank the authorities for giving us this opportunity i welcome the chief guest of the today's function on behalf of our college welcome ma'am thank you thank you thank you sir we all must be eager to hear from our guest chief guest without any further ado i request our chief guest dr shaheen sayed deputy director at directorate of health service to address the gathering already very good afternoon to everyone present here i feel privileged and grateful to be here in the esteemed presence of all our volunteer donors principal sir ushan and vice principal madam the team of goa state aids control society doctor from our north goa district hospital students from Vidya Prabodhini College and other uh, members from the community. In this last one and half hour, we have heard many things about what is blood donation, what is the importance of blood donation, how it is done, how the people are counselled and uh, motivated to uh, donate blood, and how effectively uh, the process of collecting blood. is being carried out by the team of the pathologists from our district hospitals and how the blood is stored so all these things you have already understood as sir bhushan said that this presentation should have been in front of the students to motivate them and to inspire them that they also come forward for blood donation so before saying some other things first of all i would like to thank all our voluntary blood donors who are present here who are not here a big round of applause for all the donors <laughs> on behalf of director of health services i congratulate all and i thank you all for doing the service of humanity as sir said that it's a great service doing like after shramdan the raktadan and then the uh, avayavdan or the organ donation so we are saving lives see after doing blood donation you are touching people's lives you do not know the red blood cells or the plasma or the platelets from your blood is going to home and the receivers or the recipients of those components neither they know that from which donor i have been getting this life or the important gift for my sustaining in this life they do not know but in this guys the blessings inter exchange happens at both the levels as we know it is voluntary so there is no remuneration in cash or kind but there is remuneration in the form of blessings knowingly unknowingly you are getting blessings throughout your life because without any 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 uh, th any expectations you are doing this service it's a selfless <coughs> service when i was young i have done only one but now after seeing people here in numbers they have donated i also get inspiration still i have time to donate so first of all i have to get myself check Uh, tested for all the blood test and i will uh, also go ahead with the blood donation that is my uh, pledge today because it's really inspiring like more than 100 more than 50 70 so it's really 
it motivates you to do something good, to do something productive, to be uh, in a service to humanity. I have heard about one uh, Indian donor who has donated for almost 223 times. 123 uh, for blood and 100, 100 times for uh, his blood components. I think that he is the highest blood donor in, the, in our country. So uh, this kind of great stories will be there in across uh, India. So I request all our blood donors to share their stories with people. You have now different mediums to share your stories, social media. So it let it get viral, let it get known to many people because today we could not have many students accommodated here. So I think all your stories should be heard and known to others. You are the inspiration for all. Because as we said that we have in Goa, we have crossed the benchmark or whatever is our requirement. But I think it may not be there in other states. So if Goa has surplus blood, it can be of help to other states also, if it is properly stored and if it can be utilized within that particular time. As we knew that we have three uh, government blood banks, two in both the district hospitals, North Goa and South Goa, and one in Goa Medical College. And the requirements uh, or the requisitions for blood <coughs> or the components does not only come from the, this government hospital, so when the patients are brought to the hospitals, it comes from the private hospitals too. So many times people run from here and there to uh, find out the, whichever the, uh, the matching blood is available. So I would like to request all of you to share that which kind of blood group you are having. So people come to know that, okay, this is there. This blood, uh, whatever is voluntary blood donations happen, it is stored in the blood banks of the uh, both the uh, government hospitals and the uh, Goa Medical College. So people will have more awareness about where it, where is it available. Because many times it happens that when the patient reaches to the hospital and they are told due to anything, maybe accidental trauma or non-accidental trauma or due to any other reasons, pregnancy complications, severe anemia or any other diseases like blood disease, sickle cell anemia, <coughs> thalassemia. So all these diseases where you need continuous blood to sustain your life and to survive in this world, they should know where it is available. So all of you are an epitome of art of giving. So you should share your story. This is one of my requests. Other requests, whichever students are present here, Maybe very, very, very few students are there, but I think they also can share whatever they have understood here with their fellow student. And as Sir said that we can have one or two more programs by our North Goa District Hospital to uh, do more awareness about uh, blood donation and importance of voluntary blood donation. And the youngsters, how they can come forward and uh, make uh, or do some changes in people's lives by donating their blood. because. The replenishment of the blood happens so soon, within few days. It starts within few hours or maybe maximum within 21 days, it gets replenished. So the gift of life, it is not that if you have given it, then it will not come back to you. It is always coming back to you. And you can continue this service multiple times and you can get blessings also multiple times. I would also like to thank all the students who have performed uh, in the beginning the welcome song and that uh, flash mob performance by the Red Ribbon Club uh, students. So this is an opportunity to share the thought of uh, HIV and uh, AIDS awareness also. We had a, a state level program in the month of August and then we had started that the Red Ribbon Club has to be there in acro across Goa, the students should come up and they should spread the message of uh, HIV AIDS awareness. Because uh, there is discrimination due to HIV AIDS. People living with HIV and AIDS get discriminated at workplaces, in the community, in the society. So all of us should spread that awareness also. You must have seen the 1097 number, uh, the back of the t-shirts of those students who are performing. So that is a helpline number. Anyone, it's a national helpline number, free, uh, a toll free number. Anyone can dial on that number and get enough information about HIV at it. You can clear your misconceptions about HIV and AIDS, how it spreads. Uh, and how uh, and if somebody is diagnosed with HIV infection or if they have been diagnosed with AIDS, it, it is not an end to their life. They can also live a meaningful life. So all these things, I think uh, the team of Goa State AIDS Control Society, 
दे आर डूइंग वंडरफुल थिंग्स थ्रू आउट द ईयर अक्रॉस गोवा वी हैव द पैथोलॉजिस्ट हुआ वेरी सिंसियर इन आर बोथ द डिस्ट्रिक्ट हॉस्पिटल्स अंडर डिरेक्टर ऑफ हेल्थ सर्विस दे आर ऑल्सो डूइंग मैनी कैम्प्स फॉर ब्लड डोनेशन दे आर स्प्रेडिंग दिस मैसेज थ्रू वेरियस मीन्स दैट पीपल कम आउट दे दे ट्राई टू कॉन्टेक्ट द एन जी ओज ऑल्सो दैट दे अरेंज दिस काइंड ऑफ ब्लड डोनेशन कैम्प्स इन द सोसाइटी एंड इन द कम्युनिटी एंड मैनी दिस लार्ज नंबर ऑफ पीपल कम टूगेदर and do this service and you can imagine the blessings when that uh, crowd is gathered gathered to donate blood to do the service of humanity the aura <coughs> during that event uh, its immense blessings are there and everyone can get this blessings in fact we feel grateful being part of director of health services we have so many good samaritans in our community who have that uh, sense of importance of others uh, life they they feel that uh, we can make some changes in people's lives by doing this kind of services so i will not take much of this uh, your time and whatever message i wanted to share with you is one is the the voluntary blood donors please please share your stories with others that you have done this service multiple times and many of uh, people who are like you who are actually eligible to donate blood they also come out they get inspired and motivated to do so and the students to do more awareness about blood donation and to do more awareness about hiv and aids i uh, end my speech here thank you very much uh, gsex uh, for giving me the opportunity to be here uh, i uh, really thank the principal sir bhushan uh, giving us the, uh, the achievement stories of their school and we also feel proud that we are uh, we are sitting or we are standing in in the school uh, the college or the institute which has uh, so much glory in the field of education and the community service thank you sir thank you ma'am as we come to the conclusion of this and reaching an inspiring event it is time to express our gratitude i i now request shri umakant sawant to propose the vote of thanks गोयराज्य रक्त संक्रमण परिषद गोयराज्य एड निटन संस्था विद्या प्रबोधिनी कॉलेज हम सौविध्य विद्यमान आयोजित के राष्ट्रीय स्वयंसेवी रक्तदान दिस निमतान मदी आसा आज कार्यक्रम प्रमुख पाने गोय राज्य आरोग्य संचाल उपसंचालिका डॉक्टर सैयद साईन हाँ गोय राज्य एड नियोजन परिषद आय राज्य एड नियोजन संस्था हम वती मना का दिव बर करूँ मटा तसे आज कार्यक्रम के सम्मानीय अतिथि गतिमान प्राचार्य अॉक्टर भूषण भावी हंका सुधा दिव बर करूँ मटा आज कार्यक्रम के मुखेल उलोपी उत्तर गोवा जिला हॉस्पिटल के रक्तपेढ़ी के वरिष्ठ डॉक्टर अधिकारी डॉक्टर कृपाजोग हंका वा मना का दसन दिव बर करूँ मटा तसे गोय राज्य रक्त संक्रमण परिषद के सहायक संचालक जगताप विजय जगताप हंका वा दिव बर करूँ मटा तसे विद्या प्रबोधिनी कॉलेज के टीचर्स अडंकर हंका वा दिव बर करूँ मटा आज कार्यक्रम के जे हिरो आसा पे जे जी रक्तदान करूँ खुबसे लोक जीव वाचला अक्त ब्लड डोनर के सग हाँ गोय राज्य ए डिटन संस्था वती दिव बर करूँ मटा तसे हंगा आये प्रेस मीडिया प्रिंट मीडिया हंका सुधा दिव बर करूँ मटा आनी सगे हंगा उपस्थित सामने विद्यार्थी विद्या बुद्धे हंका सुधा दिव बर करूँ आज कार्यक्रम सफल जाहिर करो थैंक यू वेरी मच यू मे स्पीक फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई थैंक विद्या प्रबोधिनी कॉलेज फॉर ऑर्गनाइजिंग दिस प्रोग्राम एंड स्पेशल थैंक्स टू श्री सुदेश नार्वेकर फॉर इन्वाइटिंग मी फॉर दिस ब्लड डोनेशन फेलिसिटेशन आई एम अ स्टूडेंट ऑफ गवर्नमेंट कॉलेज ऑफ आर्ट्स एंड साइंस कैपे करंटली पर्सुईंग माय बी ए लास्ट इयर 
I was actually inspired a long time. I did not even know my the uh, eligibility of blood donation, but since I heard about uh, the pro the donation procedure, like I heard like people donate blood, people are uh, in need of blood. So that that hearing meaning the this concept itself inspired me that I should donate blood because if if I donate blood and if I save lives then I it it will create it will make many wonders in the world. Thank you. Before we conclude, let's rise for the national anthem. Shubha Shishamani Gare Tava Jaya Gata 